Welcome once again. Right now we're at Romans chapter 11, verses 11, all the way through to verse 36. Gentiles grafted in to the Jewish tree. Paul writes, I ask then, did they, speaking of the Jews, did they stumble that they might fall? By implication here, it's fall beyond recovery. May it never be, Paul says, but by their fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if their fall is the riches of the world and their loss, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you who are Gentiles. Since then, as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glorify my ministry. Noteworthy here that Paul gave himself the title Apostle to the Gentiles. Back in the book of Acts, we see the Lord himself called Peter the Apostle to the Gentiles. So Paul says, since then I am an Apostle to the Gentiles, I glorify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh. This here is my flesh is speaking of the Jewish people and may save some of them. For if the rejection of them is the reconciling of the world, what would their acceptance be but life from the dead? But if the first fruit is holy, so is the lump. If the root is holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, being a wild olive, this is figuratively speaking about Gentiles, wild olive, were grafted in among them and became partaker with them, with the Jewish people, of the root and of the richness of the olive tree, don't boast over the branches. But if you boast, it is not you who support the root, but the root supports you. Paul makes it very clear here that the Gentiles should never boast against the Jews. The Jews, the roots, support the Gentiles. You will say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. True. By their unbelief, they were broken off and you stand by your faith. Don't be conceited. Don't be conceited, but fear. For if God didn't spare the natural branches, ouch, neither will he spare you. Hmm. See then the goodness and and the severity of God. Check this out. Verse 22. See then the goodness and severity of God. So many churches today, it's like by far most of them, if not almost all of them, always talk about the goodness of God. The goodness of, oh, God is good. God loves you. Oh, the love of God, the love of the Father, and yada, 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 yada. The love of Jesus, the love of the Lord. How many of them talk about the severity of God? the severity of God, the fear of the Lord, how he punishes and how he has no tolerance to sin, the severity of God. Toward those who fell, severity, but toward you, goodness. If, big if right here, if you continue, if you continue, goodness, here we go, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, Otherwise, you also will be cut off. They also, if they don't continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. If the Jews come back to the knowledge of their own Jewish Messiah, as they did in the first century book of Acts, they'll be grafted in again. For if you were cut out of that which is by nature a wild olive tree, that is Gentile olive tree, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, the Jewish olive tree, how much more will these, which are the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I don't desire you to be ignorant, brothers, of this mystery, so that you won't be wise in your own conceits, you won't be puffed up with pride, that a partial hardening has happened to Israel. Partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. Even as it is written, there will come out of Sion a deliverer. 
and he will turn away ungodliness from Yaakov, Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I will take away their sins. This is Isaiah chapter 59, verses 20 and 21, chapter 27, verse 9, and Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 33 and 34. Concerning the good news, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, here we talk about election again, for they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God has called the Jewish people and it is irrevocable. For as you in time past were disobedient to God, but now have obtained mercy by their disobedience, even so these also have now been disobedient, that by the mercy shown to you they may obtain mercy. For God has bound all to disobedience that he might have mercy on all. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past tracing out. Quote, For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Unquote. It's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13. Quote, Or who has first given to him and it will be repaid to him again? Unquote. That is Job, Job, Chapter 41, verse 11. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Seek God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.